with Fanny. Weekend on 2FM. OK, let's see if we have this uh, working. Neil, how you doing? Are you all right? Dave, what's the story? You well? Good man yourself. Now, you hold on a second because I want to explain who you are and what you are and where you are. Basically, if you were to take a, a, a guess at how four lads from Greystones end up as the focus for a Korean TV and Netflix show about visiting the country, well, I don't think you get this. Listen, I mean, basically, um, Neil and three of his friends have found themselves as stars of a primetime TV and Netflix show in South Korea, and now he's going to tell us all about their journey from Dublin to Seoul, basically, on the phone from Seoul. But first, before I talk to you, Neil, properly, I want to play the clip here now I'm not 100% sure if I even got all this having listened to it already I think it's of you introducing yourself to the Korean panel and then what they can expect from <laughs> Ireland I know you too is mentioned somewhere but I really haven't got a clue anyway let's take the next 29 seconds you're going to have to make sense of this because I can't <laughs> 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 yeah, I think I heard you two in there somewhere. I didn't hear Guinness, but anyway, let's start at the beginning here. Neil, welcome to the programme, right? Um, yeah, let's just say. Yeah, yeah, so um, you live in Seoul and you've been there for about yeah. 10 years. Just tell me about it, first of all. What's it like living in South Korea? Oh, it's mad, yeah. I think I would more, relate more to living in uh, Seoul more than actual South Korea because I spend the vast majority of my time here in the city centre. Uh, it's like a really high population, a lot, a lot of stuff to do. Music scene is really buzzing here. So, yeah, I, I don't, and unless I have a concert somewhere, I tend to not move too far around the country. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm loving living in Seoul. And you went over to teach English as a foreign language, is that it? Yeah, yeah. I arrived here about 2010. I had a band kind of set up before I arrived here and uh, brought my gender jazz bass on the plane. Hadn't got not enough clothes left <laughs> in my luggage when I arrived here and uh, right into the Korean winter. It's very cold here in winter, so it was a big shock when I first arrived. But wait a minute, wait a minute. You had a band set up before you got there. How do you set up a band in Seoul from Dublin before you get there? Uh, well, there's, there's actually quite a big farming community here. And I just replied to a few adverts for bass players on some of the threads. Right. And because uh, I didn't know how to speak Korean back then, so I just started playing with a lad from Kilkenny and a lad from America, and we started a band together. And can you speak Korean now? Yeah, yeah. I, I later on I joined a Korean band as a bass player, and I it was a kind of like a no English rule for them because we had to do a lot of interviews and. TV stuff, so that, that that kind of forced me to experience the language a bit more after I joined those guys. Okay, and in the piece I played there, like the, the Korean TV bit, and we're talking here about a Korean TV programme <laughs> and a Netflix show, etc. Uh, let's just take a look at this. Like, did I hear your voice in there, or, or, was, it, or was it just Korean people? Yeah, yeah, I was in there. I just explained that I've been living in Korea for 10 years. I'm a singer in, in a band. That was you talking, uh, was it? Yeah, yeah, in between. There, there was like four of us going to talk in there at the same time because they edit things like uh, very, all the voices pop on top of each other especially in that clip but um, yeah they, they were just asking about once because like Glenn Hansard and everything is massive over here oh yeah uh, they uh, they asked about uh, Westlife as well <laughs> Westlife still have a bit of a following going on um, yeah so Glenn Hansard would uh he would even be bigger than the likes of Bono over here. That, that movie was huge over here when I first arrived, like 2010. So would it be Glenn Hansard solo because of the movie once, or would it be because of the frames, or what? Oh, definitely once, yeah. The, the, oh. the OST, the, the soundtrack of once was everywhere when I arrived over here first, so he's, he's kind of one of our biggest names in, in Seoul, anyway. OK, so you say there's a good music scene over there. I mean, I have to get the big one out of the way, the old K-pop thing. I mean, that's the biggest thing that yeah. I know about. I mean, like, that's the only yeah. reason I know there's a place called Gangnam is because of Psy. So, uh, yeah. Like, what's yeah, what's yeah. K-pop like to you? K-pop is, like, it is, like, the absolute dominant music source over here. Like, um, the vast majority of people listen to it. The indie scene takes small chunks out of the overall kind of interest. But, yeah. um because it's such a massive population, like there's, in the Seoul area, there's like 20 million people. 
So if you, even if you're, you know, have moderate interest or a small fan base, it's still going to be, you know, you're still going to be filling venues and doing okay for yourself. Okay, but like, I mean, there are like no, I mean, like the biggest of the the biggest of the K-pop bands, obviously around the world, is BTS. Um, one of the main guys, yeah. the singer, he was in a crash the other day in his Merc against a bus or something in Seoul or somewhere. Did did you hear about yeah. that? No, not at all. I would be completely immune to any of the K-pop things that comes out. Like, I just ignore. I like, keep my head down. Do you know? Listen to, listen to, my own, listen to all the indie shows, and uh, you probably. You, Get, it'll probably get to you before it gets to me about BTS and yeah, all that. I've right. no interest. Okay, <laughs> well then, let's get to the real deal here because you went over to teach English as a foreign language, you went for a year, you stayed for 10 years, but what you did was you got a job in a music school. What are you teaching in the music yeah. school? And don't you say music. Yeah, uh, I was teaching guitar right. and a bit of bass as well and just kind of helping kids put a few bands together. Um, I still do a little bit of that, but in international school, so all the students now uh, would be Kind of Americans, Canadians, Australians. So yeah, I put on a few shows per year, and I have to get them to play Foo Fighters or Oasis or whatever. I still do a bit of that on the side. All right, very good. So let's talk about this TV yeah. thing, which I mentioned at the beginning, because it's like you know, as I say, yeah. like you know, four lads from Greystones ending up as the focus for a Korean TV and Netflix show about visiting the country. So what exactly is yeah. this show? Like you are the newest Seoul celeb. Tell me about it. Um, basically, they choose a country and they find someone in Korea that can speak uh, the language, the local language, who's from the country. So I think it's been on for a couple of years now. So uh, like America and England and Finland and everything has passed. So it was Ireland's turn. And I was actually singing at a Paddy's Day event this year. And one of the producers got a hold of me from that. And uh, so the premise is I have to choose Three of my friends from back home who've never been here before. That's the golden rule. They should never have been in Korea ever before. Yeah. They arrive here and cameras follow them around doing stuff for like an entire week. And then when all the footage is done, uh, I go to the studio with the celebrity kind of MCs and we sit down and chop up the footage and comment on it. And then the producers kind of paste together what they will. It's, it's like four episodes and each one's like an hour and a half long, so there's a lot in there. Okay, so each, it's a reality kind of travel show, if you like, and each trip has a foreigner, as you say, living in South Korea, that's you, and then you invite three friends from the home country to travel to South Korea, and obviously they have never been in South Korea before. They have to, this has to be their first visit, right? Yeah, yeah, I've got a couple of mates who would have, you know, visited here before, and uh, they were cast off the list immediately, so, but, um, you know, the vast majority of the mates have never been here, so it was easy enough to whittle down to three of them. And, like, what do you do on the programme? I mean, you know, you bring your friends over, and one of the lads dropped yeah. out. You got a replacement guy, and the, they didn't yeah. like him. Like, the, what comes through <laughs> on the programme? Like, does your personality come through? Do you do a lot of talking? Yeah, yeah. like, I think from the occupation will be a kind of preference. They want, they want you to be... Like one of the lads that was couldn't make it, he's a like a film critic and a blogger. They were kind of interested in that, and he, he wasn't able to go. But um, I think it worked out much better in the end um, because the three lads we brought kind of grew up together as well. So the, the that group kind of dynamic worked really well on the show, and uh, their the response from everyone's really good so far. So I think it worked out well in the end. And the program is finished, is it? I mean, it has has it aired yet? Uh, two of the episodes have been on. Right. And uh, there's two more left. And, like, are you famous? When you walk down the main street of of Seoul, people say, wow, there's your man, the Irish guy, Neil. Uh, I think, I think you know, it, it, it's it's pretty good now, but uh, I think, you know, after another month or so, it, people, the whole celebrity scene is, like, really fickle in Seoul, like, even more so than Ireland or the UK or the US, like, for the reality shows. Once you're off, it's like... Phew, so you'd really want to be following it up with some other show and jump onto it straight away. But it is, um, we're getting, I just recently released a new album with uh, my new band and uh, that's kind of helped me a lot in that sense. So that, that's kind of, I'm feeling quite grateful for that so far. Otherwise, I don't, don't, I don't look too much into the celebrity side of things, but for music, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's really helpful right now. 
Um, there's one here that says, I used to live in South Korea for three years. I'd love to watch this show with my parents. What's it called? The actual title of the programme is, it's funny, it's called Welcome, with a question mark, first time with an exclamation mark. Uh, like, welcome is a question, yeah. and then first time. Okay. I used to live in South Korea for three years, and yeah, basically people want to know. That's Holly and Waterford. So the thing about the bands situation is you've been in a bunch of bands. Um, yeah. One of them was called Harry Big Button. What does that mean? Yeah. Uh, that is London slang for an old car radio, apparently. I, I had no idea what it meant either until I asked the singer. and um, Yeah, I joined them. About 2014, I think, played together for a few years, and um, they were they were a good established band in Korea. So we got to do a bit of touring, open up for uh, Foo Fighters when they came here, and we opened up for Motorhead as well. So I did that for three years, and then um, decided to go ahead and start my own project uh, as a singer and a guitar player. Wow, so you opened up for the big bands, okay, and that was one of the bands, and now you've got this one called The Scarlet Pillows, right? So the show yeah, itself yeah. is called Welcome First Time, two of them have been broadcast, maybe two more to go. The friends you brought over, are they school friends or band friends from the past, or what is it? Yeah, <laughs> the, the producers are actually trying to hook up a few old band friends, but the guys I'm closest to back home would, wouldn't have been into music as much as I was, so uh, uh, Dara and Daniel I've known since I was about four years old. Barry I met when I was about 14. So I think that was, that kind of sealed the deal that we've actually been friends for such a long time. The producers were into it. Right. By the way, can you see the programme on YouTube or anything like that? Can we see it here? Um, it's, they're being really protective of it. It's, it's on Netflix, on Korean Netflix, but there's a, there's a link going around for um, my family and friends are using just a streaming link. And um, that, that's working pretty well for everyone, but legally, it's uh, it hasn't popped up anywhere yet. I'm right. trying to figure out a way. I well, don't have any uh, streaming sites that are doing it. It seems the Korean TV company did come over to Ireland to film with his friends, but basically, finally, do you win something? I mean, like, is, is there a competition to it? <laughs> there, there actually is a bit of a, a bonus to it. Uh, at the end of the season, they vote for their favourite country, uh, the viewers. <laughs> and after, after, like, 25 episodes or something... Well, I mean, not that much, maybe like 15 countries. And, uh, so last year, season one, Finland won it. And they were, to be honest, they were kind of brutal, a bit boring. Right. So I, I think we're, we're, we're in with a good show because the lads are, are very active on camera. Uh, some great comedy going on. So I, I think we're in with a good chance of round two. Wow, yeah. brilliant. Well, listen, look, uh, good luck with it. I'm going to play some music from your current band, The Scarlet Pillows, right? Is that what they're called? Oh, thanks a million. Yeah, it's called Best yes, Friends yes. Place. And uh, just when they did come to Ireland, what did they film here, do you know? Uh, they filmed a few aerial shots of Greystones and Dunleary and Temple Bar. And then they filmed the lads, uh, one of the lads in his house in the city centre. Dublin, and two of the lads in their childhood homes in Greystones. They just kind of interviewed them. Uh, Daniel did some cooking for them, and they filmed that. And uh, Barry, in the city centre, went to a, his local gym <laughs> as well. So I kind of followed the lads. Uh, the, it was difficult for the lads to bring them into work because of regulations. So they, they kind of just took them. They also took them to a pub in Temple Bar as well. And there was a, a trad band playing, so that, that was perfect what the producers were looking for. Right, yeah, yeah. All right, well, anyway, the programme is called Welcome, question mark, first time, exclamation mark. It goes out every Thursday if you happen to be anywhere in Korea on one of the largest stations <laughs> in Korea. And it's Neil Dagent. Is that your surname, Dagent? Oh, that, that's my Instagram name. Ah, but my yeah, name's, uh, I was, uh, yeah. Neil, Neil, right. Neil, Neil, Neil Smith. <laughs> Neil Smith. <laughs> Jeez, Not I'm as cool just, as that. I, I, yeah, I was just wondering, was it Dagent? Or is the dungeon? Anyway, I, listen. I should have said yeah. Yeah, you should have said yeah, you <laughs> fool. Yeah. All right, well, listen, look, Neil, congratulations. And uh, when the next two programmes air, I'd say you will be signing some autographs going down the street. And uh, have you ever been to Gangnam, by the way? I have, yeah, yeah. Um, not my kind of place. It's now. a rich place, isn't it? It's money, it. isn't it? Uh, it's all, yeah. It's, it's, a bit of, it's kind of the, the Hollywood of Korea. Yeah. I'm more into the Hong, Hongdae, which is the, the Indian music scene area. The indie music scene area. Okay, listen, I'm going to play some music. Listen, good luck with the rest of the programme and thanks a million for talking to us. Yeah. The Scarlet Pillows. Hello. Let's take it here now. This is Best Friends Place. Dave Fanning on 2FM. 2FM.